Emma wants to talk about this story, but I was like, we, we should not have stories that make me feel guilty on the show. Like uh, based upon what goes on in Florida, mm-hmm. uh, it's, you know, my sensitivities, uh, cause a lot of people are saying like the, that this guy is like, sort of like a whole disintegration of his career. His marriage was, was in the wake of, um, uh, Ethan Klein inviting me on, um, uh, his program yeah. uh, to confront uh, Crowder. And I just want to say like, I, you know, there's a little bit of guilt, but uh, we're going to go forward with this. But, anyway. but I mean, you really should not be caving to those kind of leftist soft sensibilities, um, Sam. You have to expose yourself to ideas, even if they make you uncomfortable. Expose yourself. And information. I, I use that. I use that term. <laughs> Folks, purpose. this came up immediately. Uh, <laughs> this came up immediately. Put up, uh, put up the uh, headline, if you would, uh, Bradley. Uh, exclusive Steven Crowder sent photos of his genitals and exchanged drugs in super creepy workplace. What kind of drugs? Say, <laughs> hey, I wonder. Um, let's find out. Let's see here. Uh, uh, they give a little bit of uh, up top, a little bit of talk about uh, Steven Crowder, um, you know, uh, the, the divorce, and there had been alleged workplace uh, misconduct threatens. Uh, mm-hmm. He, you know, was offered, uh, I guess, $50 million from Daily Wire, but insisted that he get more. Uh, earlier this month, after repeated suspensions, Louder cr- with Crowder decamped from YouTube, where it commanded a mighty audience of 5. million subscribers to rumble. A less um, a regulated but much smaller alternative. The show's audience has dwindled on Rumble to the point where his last five shows have averaged some 288,000 viewers. I mean, that's still pretty good. That's a lot of numbers. To the extent we can trust it. To the extent that we can trust it. It's a lot of people watching his show. Um, and, uh, but then they get into the, um, the troubles, apparently. One former Louder with Crowder employee told Mediate that during his time on the show, he received unsolicited sexually graphic texts that included photos of Crowder's genitalia. Those texts and images were reviewed by Mediate. Uh, In the moment, we dismissed it as sort of frat boy humor. In hindsight, it's super creepy and felt groomer-ish. It's kind the of like all frat boy. <laughs> um, hmm. What's that? That's like general to frat boy uh, behavior. I feel like, like at the time it feels like this. Right, is just those childish. are not mutually exclusive. Uh, right, uh, totally. Things. But if the frat boy was also, you know, constantly talking about the threat of LGBTQ people and groomers and using his platform in order to spread hate about gay people, the fact that he is sending photos of his genitalia, which media. Uh, saw as well and confirmed it seems um oh, yeah. to his well, male colleagues that's just interesting here's the uh, or employees I, mean, look, I should say i mean um it, it, maybe it is frat boy humor but this employee uh, ex-employee said um described it this way like he was always testing people's comfort levels with that kind of behavior because he was the boss though and had no accountability it just continued to happen there was no one trusted to complain to well, you can't uh, go to his dad. Exactly. Um, the former employee alleged that Crowder habitually exposed himself to other male staffers, a claim backed up mm-hmm. by two other sources. So, you know, it wasn't just the sending um, uh, pictures of uh, dick pics to, uh, to staffers, uh, but he also would do it in person. It's weird that the only thing that I think is weird about this, I mean, because, you know, look, I'm, I'm a boss. Uh, we all, we all do this. Um, but, um, it's weird that he would expose himself to all the male staffers, but only sent dick pics to one male staffer, according to this anyways, but maybe, maybe there was more, I don't know. Um, he only exposed himself to male staffers. Uh, it happened all the time. It was a regular occurrence. It usually happened when he was in a really good sort of manic mood. So while we were all disgusted by it, it was, and it was never welcomed, it was preferable to him being in a bad mood. Now he treated people in that state. Oh my God. Fun yep. workplace. Yes. Um, 
uh, and then uh, in response to a request for comment, Louder with Crowder CEO Gerald Morgan Jr. Isn't he the, um, the co-host, right? Yeah, yeah, basically. Right. He had some uh, problems pr apparently way back. I'm not exactly sure what they were off the top of my head. But while Louder with Crowder does not provide details on personal, private medical matters or personnel issues, it's important to note that many of these claims are missing context clear misrepresentation or outright falsehoods. I mean, sometimes there could be a context. Or a dick pic? Yeah. Um, I mean... Probably not a workplace context. Again, <laughs> Mediaite reviewed the texts and the photos and independently verified that it seemed legit. There's really seemingly no question here, especially because we covered this from, what, the New York Post a few months ago, which also spoke about with multiple sources who work there him exposing himself to them and like placing his genitals yeah. on their shoulder, for example. So this is the second article, very well sourced, very well researched seemingly that verifies that. I'd encourage Gerald Morgan Jr. to uh, delineate which are the uh, claims which are that are missing context, which are clear misrepresentations and which are outright falsehoods instead of just collapsing them all into one thing. <laughs> I'm gonna bet that he's not gonna do that. <laughs> now, this is interesting. Another source close to Crowder also said they witnessed him expose uh, himself to male staff in the office, but chalked it up to childish behavior. Now, in this instance, and this is interesting, this is important to sort of like, you know, um, the, it, it, read these articles um, carefully. Uh, Media uses the pronoun they. Now, there's one of three reasons why they did this. One, the person is non-binary. It's conceivable to me, well, that it's hard for me to imagine a non-binary person working for uh, Stephen Crowder. I'm sorry. Yeah, run. Uh, but it's conceivable that maybe someone uh, decided they were non-binary after having worked there. Or what I think is more likely is that Mediate is hiding the gender of this person because it's very sensitive. And that doesn't necessarily mean that the gender is female. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's male, but it's a way of trying to create a certain amount of, of um, question around it. Mm. Because then listen to the quote, I have personally witnessed that on one occasion, they said, my personal theory is he's a man child and just thinks it's funny, like boys in middle school playing pranks on each other in the locker room. That to me seems to be his mentality. Could it be a power move? Possibly, they said. He does virtually nothing that a grown man should do for himself. Wash his own laundry, prepare his own food, buy his own groceries. Most of the time, someone else does that for him. So he's like a child that needs to be taken care of and his humor reflects that type of childish behavior. How would you characterize that description? Uh, focusing on him being a man child that doesn't do, let's say, say, domestic chores for himself and has somebody else do that? Yeah, interesting. Well, but I mean... To me, that's an excuse. Mm. I agree. That to me sounds like someone who is trying to sort of like, uh, maybe, you know, like a, it's a limited hangout, as it were. Yes. And a source so, close to Crowder. This I'm, is not. I'm betting that's a Gerald former Morgan. employee. Well, uh, well spotted, Sam. It's a I'm, source. I'm betting that's Gerald Morgan. I mean, that's my guess, anyways. That's somebody, maybe it's not Gerald Morgan, but it is someone close to Crowder. Right. Who is trying to sort of like come up with an alternate theory? Yes, and, because you know, the rest of it, is, of it is is former employees being quoted, as opposed to now this is a source close to Crowder. Right, whose gender is also being hidden. And how that could have worked as a journalist, like reach out for comment, and so you get the like mention of Gerald up top, but then you get like, hey, can you, on background. Hey, I'll say this on background. Yeah, yep. can you yes, give me like exactly. a little bit more context? Mm -hmm. Can I identify you as a source close to Crowder? Yes, you can. Um, but I don't want you to use my uh, gender. That f that way, it's more obscured. I mean, it may, it may be, it, it's the, that CEO, maybe it's somebody else, but it's someone who is trying to mitigate the damage on Crowder. There is no doubt in my mind. Um, another former employee, and now we're back to floor, former employees, said incidents of general exposure in the workplace were so routine that they became almost unremarkable. The guys just talked about it amongst themselves, and I don't want to say it became normal, because it'd be, but it became less of a big deal. 
Uh, so there's a case to be made. He was grooming employees, the former employee said. Stephen may excuse some of that, saying he was friends with some of his employees. But that, again, draws some questions. There are power dynamics at play, regardless of how friendly you are with staff. Also, don't just don't send your penis in a message. So gross. Oh, there are power dynamics in the workplace, meaning that uh, kind of there's like That's some weird. difference, a power differential in a contract. It's not just one between two equal parties. This is the weirder part to me, to be honest with you. Like, you know, it's one thing to come and say like, oh, it's just man child. You know, and like, you know, I, 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 I've been around comedians and I've seen comedians do uh, gross stuff around there. It's, it's not appropriate in, in my mind, you know, uh, it, it's one thing for friends to be doing this out and, you know, uh, you know, I, I'm not uh, with each other outside of work. It's another when you're the boss, yeah. uh, but they're trying to play it off. Like it's his comedian mentality, <laughs> a different ex staffer said Crowder would often make uncomfortable comments during a men's only Bible study he held in 2021. You know, when you're really showing your comedy chops. Yeah, get those jokes off. The staffer said Crowder frequently remarked that, quote, men used to be more physically intimate with each other and then, quote, would reference a passage from the Bible where Abraham's servant put his hand on Abraham's inner thigh to be closer to Abraham's descendants, balls. Um, that being that your descendants will come from your uh, genitalia and your uh, semen and uh, your testicles uh, will... Uh, it's pretty hot homoerotic Bible <laughs> section. <laughs> now look, I have... Uh, Obviously, no therapy. problem with uh, homoeroticism. I don't know that you should, um, you know, being be heteroerotic or homoerotic at uh, work. Uh, frankly, I don't think you should, uh, particularly with your employees. But it's just fascinating to me that a guy who acknowledges that male sexual intimacy is in the Bible um, would be so homophobic and transphobic as this guy. That to me seems a little bit hypocritical. I mean, that's I'm all not, I'm saying. I'm not saying anything about Crowder specifically, but just to speak to general dynamics, sometimes people who have those feelings overcompensate in certain ways. That does not mean that, that Crowder is that person. I'm just saying generally that is sometimes th something that uh, is, is, exhibited by people who are you know a little bit uh that happens closeted. that happens of course i mean uh in fact um in fubar we had a whole chapter on anti-gay gay republicans and it, it very often <laughs> the most vociferous mm -hmm. homophobes and anti-gay i mean promoting legislation um turned out to maybe they didn't self-identify as gay, but they had relations uh, with um, folks of the same sex. Um, the former employee who received genitalia photos from Crowder shared a similar sentiment about working for the YouTube star. We've often debated this. It's like any abusive relationship. When it's good, it can be really fun. Most people enjoy the work itself. When it's bad, it's really bad. But over time, most become so numb to it, they don't see how messed up the place is until they get out. Um, apparently, uh, back in December of 2020, Crowder was uh, claiming that he was going to retire. He's been having a rough go of it. Mm. Well, um, yeah, so then they also say that he would uh, hand out prescription drugs. That's multiple, so, multiple former sources and a source close to Crowder claimed the conservative firebrand would offer and ask staffers for prescription drugs like clonopin. An hmm. anti-convulsant used to use seizure, seizures and is also prescribed to treat anxiety. It's like a more a stronger Xanax, right? Yeah, I've heard of that. Um, an anti-convulsant used to treat uh, but as well as cannabis gummies and opiates like Percocet. Media review, uh, media reviewed text exchanges between Crowder and former employees confirming these claims. Uh, I wonder if they'll address those. Interesting. Well, there's some that are out of context, some that are fabrications, and some that are uh, stretches of the truth. Yeah. Yeah. 
There it is. I mean, I just hope things get better over there at, um, uh, you know, Crowder's operation. I also want to say that if you are a former uh, Crowder uh, employee or a current one and you want to, um, you know, uh, be interviewed on the program or uh, help us with anything, uh, please feel free to uh, reach out. 